Book Six, Ethan Dunn, The Slaying of the Chiefs. As the sea flooding the flat sands flew on the seaborne horde, the two hosts shocked with dust and din, left of the Latin paladin, clanged all Prince Harold's howling kin on Colin and the sword. Crashed in the midst on Marcus O'Gare with Guthrum by, and westward as a central stir, far to the right and faintlier the house of Elf the harp player struck Eldred's with a cry. The center swat for weariness, stemming the screaming hordes, and wearily went Colin's hands that swung King Alfred's swords but like a cloud of evening. To westward easily, tall Eldred broke the sea of spears, as a tall ship breaks the sea. His face like a sanguine sunset, his shoulder a wessex down, his hand like a windy hammer stroke. Men could not count the crests he broke, so fast the crests went down. As a tall white devil of the plague moves out of Asian skies with his foot on a waste of cities and his head in a cloud of flies, or purple and peacock skies grow dark with a moving locust tower, or tawny sand winds tall and dry like hell's red banners beat and fly when death comes out of Araby, was Eldred in his hour. But while he moved like a massacre, he murmured as in sleep, and his words were all of low hedges and little fields and sheep. Even as he strode like a pestilence that strides from Rhine to Rome, he thought how tall his beans might be if ever he went home. Spoke some stiff piece of childish prayer, dull as the distant chimes, that thanked our God for good eating and corn at quiet times. Till on the helm of a high chief fell shatteringly his brand, and the helm broke, and the bone broke, and the sword broke in his hand. Then, from the yelling Northman, driven splinteringly on him, ran full seven spears, and the seventh was never made by man. Seven spears, and the seventh was wrought as the fairy blades, and given to Elf the minstrel by the monstrous water maids, by them that dwell where luridly lost waters of the Rhine move among roots of nations being sunken for a sign. Under all graves they murmur, they murmur and rebel, down to the buried kingdoms creep, and like a lost rain roar and weep o'er the red heavens of hell. Thrice drowned was Elf the minstrel and washed as dead on sand, and the third time men found him, the spear was in his hand. Seven spears went about Eldred like stays about a mast, but there was sorrow by the sea for the driving of the last. Six spears thrust upon Eldred were splintered while he laughed. One spear thrust into Eldred, three feet of blade and shaft. And from the great heart, grievously came forth the shaft and blade, and he stood with the face of a dead man, stood a little and swayed, then fell as falls a battle tower on smashed and struggling spears, cast down from some unconquered town that rushing earthward carries down loads of live men of all renown, archers and engineers. And a great clamor of Christian men went up in agony, crying, Fallen is the tower of Wessex that stood beside the sea. Center and right the Wessex guard drew pale for doubt and fear, and the flank failed at the advance, for the death light on the wizard lance, the star of the evil spear. Stand like an oak, cried Marcus. Stand like a Roman wall. Eldred the good has fallen. Are you too good to fall? When he, we were wan and bloodless, he gave you ale and now The pirates deal with him as dung. God, are you bloodless now? Grip, Wolf and Gorlias. Grip the ash. Slaves, and I make you free. Stamp, Hildred, hard on English land. Stand, Gurth. Stand, Gorlias. Gawain, stand. Hold Halfgar with the other hand. Halmer, hold up the knee. The lamps are dying in your homes, the fruits upon your bow. Even now your old thatch smolders, Girth. Now is the judgment of the earth. Now is the death grip. Now! For thunder of the captain, no less, the Wessex line leaned back and reeled a space to rear as Elf charged with a Rhine-made spear and roaring like the Rhine. For the men were borne by the waving walls of woods and clouds that pass by dizzy plain and drifting sea, and they mixed God with glamoury. God with the gods of the burning tree and the wizard's tower and glass, 
but mark was come of the glittering towns where hot white details show, where man can number and expound, and his faith grew in a hard ground of doubt and reason and falsehood found where no faith else could grow. Belief that grew of all beliefs one moment back was blown, and belief that stood on unbelief stood up iron and alone. The Wessex Crescent backwards crushed as with bloody spear went elf roaring and routing and mark against elf yet shouting shocked in his mid-career. Right on the Roman shield and sword did spear of the Rhine maids run, but the shield shifted never. The sword rang down to sever. The great Rhine sang forever, and the songs of elf were done. And a great thunder of Christian men went up against the sky, saying, God hath broken the evil spear, ere the good man's blood was dry. Spears of the charge, yelled Mark Amain. Death on the gods of death! Over the thrones of doom and blood goeth God, that is a craftsman good. And gold and iron earth and wood loveth and laboreth. The fruits leap up in all your farms, the lamps in each abode. God of all good things done on earth, all wheels or webs of any worth. The God that makes the roof girth, the God that makes the road. The God that heweth kings and oak, writeth songs on vellum. God of gold and flaming glass, configrit potentias, or cum scutum gorias, claudium et bellum. Steel and lightning broke about him, battle bays and palm. All the Kate Sea Kings swayed among woods of Wessex arms upflung, the trumpet of the Roman tongue, the thunder of the psalm. And midmost of that rolling field ran Ogier ragingly, lashing at Mark, who turned his blow and brake the helm about his brow and broke him to his knee. Then Ogier heaved over his head his huge round shield of proof, but Mark set one foot on that shield, one on some sundered rock appealed, and towered above the tossing field a statue of the roof, dealing far blows about the fight like thunderbolts of Rome, like birds about the battlefield. While Ogier writhed under his shield like a tortoise in his dome, but hate in the buried Ogier was strong as pain in hell. With bare, brute hand from the inside, he burst the shield of brass and hide, and a death stroke to the Roman side, sent suddenly and well. Then the great statue on the shield looked his last look around. With level and imperial eye and mark, the man from Italy fell in the sea of agony and died without a sound. And Ogier, leaping up alive, hurled his huge shield away, flying as when a juggler flings a whizzing plate in play, and held two arms up rigidly and roared to all the Danes, Fallen is Rome! Yea, fallen, the city of the plains! Shall no man born remember that breaketh wood or wield how long she stood on the roof of the world as he stood on my shield? The new wild world forgetteth her as foam fades on the sea how long she stood with her foot on man as he with his foot on me. No more shall the brown men of the south move like ants in lines to quiet men with olives or madden men with vines. No more shall the white towns of the south where Tiber and Nihilus run, sitting around a secret sea, worship a secret sun. The blind gods roar for Rome fallen, and Forum and Garland gone, for the ice of the north is broken, and the sea of the north comes on. The blind gods roar and rave and dream of all cities under the sea. For the heart of the north is broken, and the blood of the north is free. Down from the dome of the world we come, rivers on rivers down. Under us swirl the sects and hordes, and the high dooms we drown. Down from the dome of the world and down, struck flying as a skiff on a river, in spate is spun and swirled, until we come to the end of the world that breaks short like a cliff. And when we come to the end of the world, for me I count it fit, to take the leap like a good river, shot shrieking over it. For what so hap at the end of the world, where nothing is struck and sound, it is not by Thor, these monkish men, these humbled Wessex hounds, not this pale line of Christian hinds, this one white string of men shall keep us back from the end of the world and the things that happen then. It is not Alfred's dwarfish sword, nor Egbert's pygmy crown shall stay us now, that descend in thunder, rending the realms and the realms thereunder, 
down through the world and down. There was that in the wild men back of him. There was that in his own wild song, a dizzy throbbing, a drunkard smoke that dazed to death all Wessex folk and swept their spears along. Vainly the sword of Colin and the axe of Alfred plied. The Danes poured in like a brainless plague and knew not when they died. Prince Colin slew a score of them and was stricken to his knee. King Alfred slew a score and seven and was borne back on a tree. Back to the black gate of the woods, back up the single way, back to the place of the parting ways, Christ's knights were whirled away. And when they came to the parting ways, Doom's heaviest hammer fell. For the king was beaten, blind, at bay, up the right lane in his array. But Colin swept the other way, where he smote great strokes and fell. The thorn woods over Ethan Doon stand sharp and thick as spears. By night in furs and forest harms, far sundered with the friends at arms, the loud lost blows, the last alarms came not to Alfred's ears. The thorn woods over Ethan Doon stand stiff as spikes in mail. As to the hot king came at morn, dead Roland on a doubtful horn, seemed unto Alfred lightly borne, the last cry of the gale.